preliminary data. So what I'm going to do is introduce you to kind of a, a new project that we're working on and uh, go over some of the trends that we've seen. Uh, I'm live here. All right. So um, I've only, we're a little bit behind, so I'm going to shorten things up a little bit, get us back on track. But uh, I just wanted to start and show you our uh, air drill and our air seeder that we use uh, all summer long. Uh, it's, in, it's in the red in the bottom at the center. We've got a removable toolbar so we can adjust everything that we're doing. We've got uh, stealth uh, pair hole openers that we, we use for a long time. We've got uh, pillar laser disc hole openers on there for the majority of the work that we're doing. Uh, we've got uh, two cones so we can vary seed, fertility, and everything at the same time. We've got different boxes so we can adjust our FOSS. We can do different fertilizer blends. We can put winter wheat out the side. So basically the sky's the limit on uh, the research capacity for what we're doing. And the other thing is that we've been using this drill for a long time. We have five, six years experience. Uh, we know it inside and out. We know when something's off. Uh, it was, I was calibrating this spring and something just wasn't making sense in one of our... Uh, our sprockets wasn't adjusted right, and it was just like a feeling, you know, the charts didn't look like they did for the last five or six years. So we went back through everything with a fine tooth comb and, and kind of figured out what was happening. So I'm, when, I, when I make reference to an air drill on nine and a half space, nine and a half inch spacing, I'm talking about that red drill there. Uh, the other drill I'm going to talk about is this uh, precision planter, our monosend planter that we just got. And, uh, you know, why am I going to talk about this planter? Well, uh, as Ken mentioned, we're working on our green corn agronomy project. Uh, we're seeing producers move into soybeans. Uh, you know, around our area, we've got sugar beets. We've got a lot of row crop uh, type operations. And so, so the big question is, is just, you know, if you have this planter already, can you, can you adapt it for other things? You know, canola is uh, a pretty variable crop. Uh, can, can you use it to grow your canola better? What's the ideal spacing? How do you use that fertility? And, and how do you set it up? Um, I'm going to focus mainly on the agronomy. There's a, an entire other economic standpoint to this, but I'm going to focus just on the agronomy for today. So, uh, as Rick mentioned yesterday, uh, the, the recommendations from the Canola Council of Canada is that uh, we've gone down to maybe four to six plants per square foot as our, as our uh, ideal uh, uh, emergence. Uh, when I started, it was seven to 10, seven to 10, seven to 10. So uh, we've seen, we've seen the, the seeding rate go down. And so that's gonna have some implications on, on how we seed and what we do moving forward. So I just wanna throw a couple pictures of our awesome staff in there this year. Um, Everybody's working hard. This is the first time we use this drill and, and we spent like a month solid calibrating and doing everything we could to get this ready. And uh, it was a lot of hard work from all of our crew. So I've got uh, uh, Lewis, Ken, and, and Cam here are changing the discs open over. So, so how this, this uh, drill works, actually we've got uh, our fertilizer set up, uh, two big tanks on the front. So we set it up with 1034 liquid FOSS. We changed over the mechanism that it came with and put a zero max so we could dial everything in as precisely as we wanted. And we also have a complementary project that we're working on looking at the specific uh, FOSS rates because as you increase the spacing of the rows, you're really increasing the amount of fertilizer you're putting down in that specific row. So there's big implications on seed safety. So our other project is looking at the liquid FOSS aspect. We've got four boxes on the back for seed, and then we side-banded our uh, 4600 nitrogen out the front. So in comparison to some of the previous work that's been done with the precision planters, we've got everything coming down at the time of seeding like uh, a lot of the producers would do around here. Um, so I got a video of this coming up right away. This is the uh, close-up of the uh, the uh, vacuum portion with the disc there. There's a, Sometimes you get a skip or a double uh, but for the most part, what you end up, is, end up with is really precise uh, placement of the seed, and that's the, where the uh, advantage is going to come in. Both of them are. Oh, this sound doesn't really matter. I can... uh, this is just a quick video of, uh, of everything getting moving. Uh, you'll see it start to spin in just a second here. And... Uh, we're a little shaky on the camera. We didn't have Morton's awesome uh, HD stuff working. Oh, uh -oh. Working yet. I'll pop ahead to this next one. Our cameraman Morton risked life and limb, I think, to take this. Uh, 
But, but what I wanted to show was that on our planter, you've, we've got the, the uh, fertilizer banded up front just on the side band. You've got those row cleaners that come out. Uh, everything spins, the seed moves out constantly in a really precise fashion. And uh, if you watch, watch the back end as the seed's going down, one of the advantages to, of this drill is we get really good uniformity and uh, we get really good seed distribution. So we, we took measurements measuring the individual spacing between all the canola, checked the, the deviation between that, and, and compared to our air drill, we got really good precise, uh, precise seed placement. So this is just a, a shot of the, the precision planter at the 12 inch spacing. We, we were hoping to get everything set up identical between the air drill and the planter, but uh, it, when it just came down to it, it, it just didn't work. We couldn't get in there with our tools and, and tighten everything up. And so I think uh, 12 inch was as, as close as we could get. This is a shot of our air drill at the nine and a half inch. So to summarize our, our first part of our project, what I did was I just took a UAV shot and then kind of cherry picked and photoshopped these into the, to the treatment. So on the left hand side, you'll see our air drill at 20, 40, 60, 80, and 160 seeds per meter squared going bottom to top. You've got the monosem. Uh, that's the precision planter at 12 inch, and you've got the monosem at 20 inch. So this was taken in Lethbridge, July, I think the 12th. Uh, this is our dry land site, so that's important to kind of keep in mind here. Um, and I think I'm just going to get right into the data, and then uh, I'll kind of come back to this photo because I think it's pretty cool. So we're in MedHat. This is our, our MedHat percent emergence. Uh, what we did was we took, say we had 10 plants per meter squared and we were trying to get 20. Uh, we went back and said, okay, well that's going to be about 50% emergence. So that's, that's what I'm presenting here. You'll see that as you increase the seeding rate, we're getting a, a decrease in the percent emergence. And that makes sense with uh, the crop competition as you got really plants uh, seeded really tightly together. There's going to be some, some loss there. Um, and, you know, canola is a tough crop to get really great emergence on, so that's one of the things we're looking specifically at with this planter. Our air drill, in all three cases here, we've got a Medhat rain fed, a Lethbridge rain fed, and a Lethbridge irrigated site. In all cases, our air drill had the lowest emergence. Our, our uh, precision planter at 20, 20 inch spacing had uh, kind of a sharper curve, and in some cases, slightly less than our, our precision planter. So, kind of the same thing, I threw a line of best fit in here. Uh, as best that I could, but you'll see that the precision planter tended to have the best emergence. So when we tallied everything up, we found that we actually got a 35% increase in our emergence from using this precision planter. So I know there's some, some maybe some conflict on how well we're seeding with our air drill, but that's why I said we've been using this for a long time. We use it for thousands of plots a year, and we're pretty comfortable with the data coming out of it. Um, and we, also, we only saw about a 20% increase in the emergence with the precision planter at, at the 20 inch spacing. And I think that's coming back to the, just having the, the ultra wide rows there. So if I go back to the actual plants per meter squared and uh, think about those recommendations of four to six plants per square foot. Uh, say we go on the low end to four plants per square foot, it's about 44 plants per meter squared. And I just happen to have two perfect data points there. So what I did was I, I brought the arrows down and that's kind of showing that we can maybe get away, get away with that uh, ideal plant population at the 60 seeds per meter squared with this air drill. This is, remember, kind of just preliminary data, um, all the sites. Uh, tallied together, but you can see the general trend. We can, we can get away with a little lower seeding rate on the 12 inch compared to the 20. Um, our air drill, you know, we did pretty good economically, probably at about 100 seeds per meter squared, which is, you know, generally around your recommended rates. So for, for yield, we're looking uh, at a pretty similar thing for each of the sites. You'll see we got some pretty good yields. This is the first time since I've been on board here that we've got a higher dry land yield for canola in Med Hat. Um, which just kind of goes to show you some of the, the climate, uh, what happened this year with our, our rainfalls and lack of uh, June rains. Uh, you'll see the, the trend increase, 20 to 160 seeds per meter squared for the most part. I'm not sure there's a lot of difference at the high end. We haven't run the stats, but even just looking at, at the data, it's pretty obvious that for some of these, there's not a lot of difference even up at the higher seeding rates. Uh, so this is the rain fed in Lethbridge, and again, we had uh, quite a bit lower yield overall. Uh, but we tended to see our highest yield in our precision planter at 12 inch, uh, quite a bit lower in the 20 inch, and then uh, kind of right in the middle with our air drill. 
Um, the only, the biggest difference I think on this, uh, which I said, um, you really, we really have to kind of pay attention to the difference between this irrigated and dry land is when I look at the irrigated data, um, you know, it looks like our yields on, on the precision planner are highest down on that lower end. Like there was really no benefit to having, you know, 160 seeds per meter squared. Um, in this case, you know, 40 seeds per meter squared target seeding rate and we had our highest yield for the, for the precision planner at 12 and then at 100 and, or, sorry, at 60 seeds per meter squared on the, on the 20 inch spacing. So, um, definitely there's some more to it, uh, you know, than uh, once you get into some of the, the dry land versus irrigated. So, uh, this is our, our average yield increase. We had a 21% increase uh, for the precision planter at 12 inch, and we actually saw a decrease in that, in that 20 inch spacing. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens the next couple of years if, it, if these are the, the same trends we get. So then I kind of added the, the arrows in back the same way that it, we did with the emergence. And uh, it, it follows the exact same trend where we had good emergence at a low seeding rate. We had uh, really good yields at a low seeding rate. Uh, so, you know, down at about 40 seeds per meter squared, we can get a, a pretty decent yield out of our uh, precision planter at 12 inch spacing. On an air drill, we had to get up to about that 100 seeds per meter squared. Uh, this, again, this is without economics, but just by looking at looking there you can you can see the same trend so we've got uh, plans to get a lot more data and, and we could probably put a couple hour presentation together at some point you know, we're gonna, we've got NDVI uh, leaf area index canopy closure UAV coverage and uh, and a whole bunch of that other stuff so uh, one of the factors that we're going to look at is uh, this kind of this crop canopy coverage a lot of it relates to summer solstice I won't even begin to try and explain that um, uh, like how it works, but uh, basically the longest day of the year is on June 21st, and the idea is if you have good canopy coverage, by then you're getting optimum photosynthetic capacity for your plant, for your uh, crop. So this is a shot of our irrigated study taken in Lethbridge July 12th uh, of this year, and you can hardly tell the differences between the treatments. The only thing I can tell is that the really wide ones are the precision planter at 30 inch spacing. And then going back to that first one I shot, this is taken July 12th, the exact same day. This is our uh, dry line canola in Lethbridge. So there's some pretty interesting things going on here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a golfer, so I have this golf analogy. You know, where is the sweet spot in what you're trying to achieve? And I think for everybody it's going to be different. And I think that's where, you know, I was talking with a few guys last night. And, and just, you know, a little nuance between their operations and their economics totally changes what they're doing. So I think it's important to kind of do this for yourself and kind of do this like a visual kind of pros, cons list to what you're doing. So, you know, we talk about different things. So that sufficient canopy cl closure at the summer solstice, where is that going to be? Well, it's going to be different in, in each of these uh, operations. I think on the air drill, I think we have to keep our seeding rate a little higher. Just some losses. I think we lose some seed out the furrow at the back and, and different things like that. On our mono sem with the 12 inch, we can we see. I think we can get away with a lot lower rates. And then uh, on the the really wide spacing under a dry line condition, I'm, I'm not sure we ever even got that sufficient or ideal canopy closure. So, where's our ideal row spacing? Probably in that narrower, but maybe uh, if you're doing irrigated or, or certain applications, maybe it is on that wider. Um, what's the ideal spacing between the seed? I think uh, our data is already showing that the, the precision planter has really good precision. Um, and there's not a lot of big clumps. If you look down in the bottom left corner, you can see there's some big holes where just no seed ended up, and then there's some gaps where there's a whole bunch of seed piled together at the same time. Where's our lowest seed costs? Obviously, uh, down at the bottom. What's your risk management? What's your tolerance? You know, is a one in five year bad loss acceptable to you? Um, where does your canola look better than your neighbors? I was just trying to kind of fill everything in, so I got this nice sweet spot uh, for my golf club there. So yeah, we're focused a lot on the agronomics. I think there's going to be a, a whole other side to the economics. And, uh, you know, th this question, the precision planner isn't about recreating the wheel and what you're doing. It's about adapting uh, equipment and, and things that we're already doing to new applications and, and seeing what we can do with that. So. Uh, yeah, there's a, a million management decisions that are, are going to go into uh, whether or not uh, you're going to do something like this. If 
anybody uh, is, is using precision planters and, and wants some more info, just come find me at the break and we can chat about some of the, the details and the nuance of what we're finding. Um, there's a whole lot going on, so I thought I'd leave you with some wise words from my friend Al. If you can't explain it simply, uh, then you don't yet understand it well enough. So hopefully we can explain this nice and simply for you at some time. Thanks.